Hi, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is China Rose Black Tea from McNulty's, which is one of my favorite teas, one of my favorite tea shops. So we're in a good place right now, whenever it cools down. It's kind of hot. Okay, so I thought it's the end of June. It's Tuesday. Let's do the mid-year book freakout tag for 2020. And I was trying to figure out why it's called freakout. I didn't do that much looking into it though but I mean I think a lot of people do freak out when they realize that we're halfway through the year and it's like oh January was just like yesterday how are we already at the end of June or in June or and I haven't read all these books I meant to read I don't know I guess that's what it is but to be perfectly honest even though moments in January seem very recent I think anything before March seems like a billion years ago now such a different life but I thought, you know what, I'll do the tag because I wanted to do it last year, but I, I had just started, so I didn't really get a chance to do so. Uh, so might as well do it now. And we're kind of, because it's the end of June, we're kind of really mid-year, so apt. Okay, so the first question is, or prompt, challenge, it's not really a question. Best book you've read so far in 2020? And I'm always, having, I always have a hard time picking the best. You know, because sometimes it really has context. At the time, this was the best book, or because of this, it was the best book. But I picked two that I actually did actually, actually read around the same time. And I thought, I like doing ties. I like tying things up. But um, they're both fiction, but one of them is kind of historical fiction. And one is technically kind of historical fiction because it's written in, a, in the past, but it's really like... Uh, kind of a sequel or a, you know, reimagining or whatever you call it of a Jane Austen book. So um, this was Hilary Mantel's The Mirror and the Light. I was waiting for this for a very long time. And even though it was a bit of a slow read for me, I'm still thinking about it. It's been a couple months since I read this and I'm still thinking about it and with good thoughts. So that's one. And this is one I talk about a lot and will probably continue talking about a lot. Um, and that's The Other Bennet Sister by Janice Hadlow. Hadlow. Yes. About Mary Bennet. I read it, like I said, around the same time as The Mirror and the Light, and it was a different mood altogether, but, uh, I just really went through it so fast for a big book because I just couldn't put it down. And there were so many other good books that I read this year, but those are just the, the ones. Number two. Best sequel you read so far in 2020. I didn't actually take it down to show you guys but it's not much to look at anyway it's kind of crumbly um i guess you can call it a sequel because it was the second book in the kind of a series and that was barchester towers by anthony trollope i read the warden the warden years ago and then i started barchester towers and then somehow stopped and then picked it up again this year and oh it was so funny it was hilarious it was um it made me want to keep going with Trollope once again. Actually, every book I read from Trollope makes me want to keep going with Trollope. <laughs> but, you know, I'm into the next book now, um, halfway through, I think, the um, Dr. Thorne, and it is a very good book as well. Um, but Barchester Towers, so good. Number three, new release you haven't read yet but want to. So many. <laughs> I mean, I keep, you know, I've been spending way too much money on new books when I know that if I wait a little longer, I can get it either cheaper or a slight discount anyway, or eventually the libraries might open up or something. But um, there, um, there's a series of books by Laurie R. King uh, about Mary Russell, who becomes acquainted and close to Sherlock Holmes. Uh, so it's kind of a retelling of Sherlock Holmes or I don't know, whatever you call it, pastiche, etc. But it kind of is its own thing. I don't know how to put this, but Mary Russell is great on her own, right? And Sherlock Holmes still stays pretty true to who he was, but just works with Mary Russell. And I've loved those books so much. There may be one in the series I, I haven't, I forgot to pick up or I managed to not get to. So I'm trying to rectify that. So I probably should just read that first. But there's a book that just came out, I think this month called Riviera, Riviera Gold. So I think it takes place in the French Riviera in the 20s, which was, you know, very, um, very good for someone like Poirot. So it'll be interesting to see someone like Sherlock Holmes there. Uh, 
we'll see. Uh, I, I do. I love the way, in a way, that's also historical fiction in a weird, yeah, because Mary Russell does tend to come, in, become acquainted with actual historical people. Um, Cole Porter, I think, was in her last book. Um, Tolkien was in one of her books she ran into in Oxford. That was fantastic. So yeah, I'd like to get to that soon. I don't know how soon because again, I keep wanting to buy new books and I'm like, oh. so anyway, um, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Um, so a couple of books, there's one that I think actually in the UK came out today and I could probably order it, but I'm still like, and that is the constant rabbit by Jasper Ford. Now, his last book was a book called Early Riser, which I think was a standalone book. And I read a lot of his books, the entire Thursday Next series I loved. Even the ones that came after the first four, which were like the big main ones for a long time. And then he came up with sequels later on. And he's had other books, the, um, the Nursery Crimes. The Fourth Bear was one of my favorite of his books. Uh, and I'm forgetting. Oh, yeah, there was one one called Shades of Grey that was supposed to have another book coming out, but I don't know if it will. But then Early Riser came out a couple, two years ago, I think. And I, a friend got a hold of it for me and gave it to me. I was so excited and I started it and I just, I don't know, couldn't get through it. Maybe one day I will go back to it. And maybe I will have a different frame of mind and actually like it. But yeah, it was kind of like, maybe I'm not as into his writing as I was before, but I did reread The Air Affair, which was his first book a couple, just a couple of years ago when I loved it still. So I think it may have just been that book, but The Constant Rabbit has, a, from this, the description, it sounds a little bit like, um, not exactly like, but it had a similar feeling to The Fourth Bear to me. So I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, if it's that good that I do actually want to read it, but do I want to pay price for it I don't know but the other one that I am also anticipating very much also comes out this coming month and that's Austin Years by Rachel Rachel Cohen and it basically it's a memoir I think of five of of the Jane Austen novels and the writers experience with it that just sounds so up my alley and would be perfect for Jane Austen July but again after all the spending I've been doing do I want to spend full price we shall see but I do anticipate both of them Still kind of hot, but gotta go slow. I don't want to anticipate a burnt tongue. Been there. So, number five is Biggest Disappointment. And I've had a few books that were good, but not as good as I thought they were gonna be. I gotta turn off this air conditioner. Sorry, the sound. Um, you know, I, I, I just, I was just a few days ago, I talked about the Blue Train Bag of the Christie and how it was like, huh, but. But I'm, I'm willing to feel a little disappointed in books as long as I'm not, especially when I buy them on a discount. Like the Blue Train, I think, was the one I bought in a Strand kiosk near Central Park for, I don't know, maybe $6. I mean, I still want to get a good story out of the deal, but I don't mind as much. But when you pay kind of full or almost full price, the not cheapskate, because yeah, I'm a little bit of a cheapskate, but I mean, I honestly, one should be careful with money. Uh, one wants to support authors, authors. But still, when you read as much as a lot of us do, you just have to be careful. So this book I bought about a year ago, because it was around July 4th weekend. And I bought it in one of my favorite bookshops, the only local bookshop, um, back when you could just pop into a bookshop, no problem. I know everything's opening up again, but still not quite there yet and the story bookshop is a wonderful place but they're taking it really slow with the reopening as far as being able to just pop in and browse because they just want to have their their people be safe so i i totally respect that but this book i got i had seen it in other bookshops and then i saw it in a story bookshop and thought oh i'm gonna get this and it just sounds so up my alley the catman of gotham by peggy gavan or gavin who knows and I mean, the picture is great. It's tales of feline friendships in old New York. And it started out pretty good. And maybe it will get better. But I got to the state, the police station cats, which is basically different cats that are, were the cat of a specific police station. And I found that, not that that's a problem really, but 
it was more that every single encounter with a different cat, every single cat, it was like a little bit about the cat and then just paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs about the history of Bitton behind every single edifice that these cats had any contact with and it's okay to learn I, I do love learning about old new york but it got to the point that it got dreary for me like okay do i really need this i want to know more about the feline relationships with the cat men of gotham and it wasn't satisfying me in that way so i said okay i have other books to read and maybe because i think i was reading this in april maybe it was i was in such a bad mood in april that if that affected things, but I know I read other books that I loved in April, right? I think, was it, did I read this? You know, huh? hello? But <laughs> I think. So I may pick this up again. It's not a complete DNF. I got up to page 52 um, out of 200 plus pages. So I might just have another go at it another time. But I'm just not rushing back to it. And I just, I felt sad because I really thought this was going to be one of my favorite books this year. And of course, because I did not get it at a discount. So the, the cheapskate in me is like, eh, rebelling. So number six, biggest surprise. And I don't know if I've been really surprised by any books, by any plots, by anything. Like they were all either really good books or really not great books or whatever. But I would say... I wouldn't call this my favorite book of the year, but it was a book that I was, among others, not forced to read, but it was my book club, my book club pick. So it wasn't something that I had chosen. You know, when I choose my books for a month or for a time period, out of my own bookshelves, out of my own choice, even if someone recommended it to me, it's like, okay, I'm reading this because at this time I want to read it. So sometimes a book club even though it's exciting to be in a book club sometimes because you have, you can talk about books with people. Sometimes you end up reading a book that you say, oh, do I, this, I just didn't feel like reading this. And then you end up reading the book and sometimes you're like, yeah, I, now I know I, why I wouldn't have chosen this. But this one ended up being a book that I flew through and wanted to know what was going to happen and did really like, am I saying that everyone's going to love it? I don't think so, but it, was a good surprise for me and that is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens or is it Delia? Delia Owens and I think one of the things that helped was I read it in early May during the right right around the springathon which was just reading a lot of nature books and this was a this was a fiction book <laughs> um but it was written by a nature expert nature writer etc so it had a lot of that incorporated in it so that put the plot was good the characters were interesting but that the writing about about trees and plants and birds and insects water and everything it just was uh, yeah pleasantly surprising so where are we number seven you see that face line <laughs> that's my freak out moment right okay uh favorite new author which is either a debut or new to you one of these may be a debut I'm not sure but I decided to do a non-fiction and a fiction you know, split it up so I just finished a book I may talk about it if I do a wrap-up am I gonna do a wrap-up we have yet to see this was a non-fiction writer that I had one book of for a few years and then I went to book off and found bunch of books mostly for a dollar is like one for five dollars this one was a dollar and so I thought okay this might be good for this time of year and it started out slow for me but then I started reading it and I did find it fascinating and that is 1776 by David McCullough McCull? I can't even say his name sorry um I should be able to say names like that I used to read a lot of pronunciation guides for like So anyway, <laughs> that little uh, fun interlude there. So the subject itself wasn't exactly how I expected it to be, but I did end up getting wrapped up in what was going to happen to George Washington, who is someone I'm not very interested in. So I'm not, I'm not not interested in, but like whenever I've read about the time around the American Revolution, he's one of my least favorite or the one I'm least interested in. So the fact that I was at all invested in him is something and just the actual writing I'm like okay so now I have a few more books back here 
and I'm looking forward to it. And I also have, I keep showing you this book and I don't care because I loved it. And uh, Janice Hadlow. So, I mean, someone who can make, and I know there's other Mary Bennett books out there. There's one I have called Mary B, which I haven't read yet, which I got Epic off for a dollar, um, which I've heard kind of not great things about. So I don't know. But she made Mary so interesting to me and so understandable. I think that was the more important part. I mean, I did kind of get her in some ways, I think, um, due to the personality I, that I am. I did understand her maybe more than someone who was just reading it. I, I'll talk a lot more about Pride and Prejudice next month, so I'm not going to get into it now. But I love this book, and so I think I hope to love this author, whatever comes out. We shall see. I don't think there is any writer out there who I've read every book and absolutely loved. Almost Jane Austen because, yeah, basically her top, her six novels, I love all of them. So maybe Jane Austen, but that's about it. Number eight, newest fictional crush. I have none. I'm not crushing on anybody. I'm, I'm not saying that there were there were characters when I was reading a book that I may have been a little more invested in. I feel like, and please don't take this as a judgy thing, but I feel like that kind of um, question prompt, whatever, is more toward a younger group, people who read like YA type books that get really invested in, um, you know, wanting to see certain characters get together, whatever. And I don't say that I never get crushes and I'm not saying that other types of books will not you know won't. I will sometimes read a novel and get totally interested in a particular person and be totally fascinated with them so you could call that a crush but I just it doesn't happen to me very often anymore even if it's a favorite character I'm just I don't I don't really crush on them then again that could change <laughs> there are people that I am more wrapped up in than others but not this year not so far anyway Number nine, newest favorite character. And I still kind of feel the same way though. I read a lot of good books. I read a lot of people, you know, characters that I was more interested in than others, but not to that point. So, oh well. And then number 10, book that made you cry. Not really, I haven't been crying. And that's, good. well, I think the main reason is because I don't cry very much from books. There are books that are sad that I'll feel a little, oh, and I can remember specific books that I did cry at the ending, whether it was from an animal dying or a person dying, animals dying will make me cry. But honestly, there are books that I've loved that um, where the animal in it has recently died and I felt sad about that, but I wasn't reading, it wasn't in the book. Um, otherwise, no, I felt frustrated sometimes or annoyed about things. Um, I read the Bible book of Judges this year again, and oh my goodness, that made me a little bit <laughs> crying out of just, oh, but not actual crying, just kind of like, whew. Number 11, book that made you happy. Now this is kind of interesting because it's at the time that I read it that it made me happy, and if I read it now, it may be a different feeling because I'm going to go back into my mopey sob story again. So in... January I read Full Dark House by Christopher Fowler which makes me happy in a way that not reading about death murder and all that stuff not that itself does not make me happy investigating things like that will make me interested but it took place in London in the theater district I do like theater miss it but I could get through that um it took place in an actual theater beautiful theater that I've never actually been inside of because just didn't have the occasion to but I've passed by it so many times and it's really close to 84 Charing Cross Road so when I was reading that and then I started getting into 84 Charing Cross Road again it put me in one of my happy rabbit holes so reading just London nerdiness just made me so happy and it was January so I still fully expected I was going to London in March so it made me like just look forward to it so obviously now not so much but still, I don't know, anything that, that, you know, ticks the nerd button in me will make me happy. Number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. And I don't know what, I haven't bought any 
gorgeously bound volumes, you know, gilt edges, etc. And I have, I have purchased quite a few books this year and a lot of them are kind of pretty, but these are the ones that I really wanted based on their cover, which sounds weird, but no, I mean, it's actually true. The, well, this one I bought because I wanted to read the story, but the cover was just Miss Austin. And by the way, these are all blue-ish. Which is interesting because blue is not my top favorite color, but for some reason this is just such a pretty cover. I can't stop looking at it. I can't stop looking at it. And Mozart Starling, which is a great book too, and I loved this. I, I am a big bird person lately. I mean, I've always been into birds, but I also had a terror of pigeons, so I can never call myself a full bird person. But that's really pretty. And this one I literally bought, not because I didn't, I mean, I did want, I want to read this book. I want, I still haven't read it yet, but I want to read the book. The, the subject is something totally up my alley, but I literally, I keep saying literally, I bought this book on book, book Depository to get the UK cover because the one in the American cover didn't do it for me, but I just think this is so beautiful. The Seabirds Cry. Look at that puffin. It just makes me so happy and yeah I just think it's beautiful so those are three okay I know a lot of times it's about one book but ah. and last but not least what books do you need to read by the end of the year need is a weird word because there is nothing that I need to read but there are two books that I started last year that I really really want to finish this year I really just have to take the time to do it. They're both Victorian books, so if I can't finish them by October, I may just stick them into one of the Victoria, the Victober, Victober prompts. And that is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall and Dombey and Son. You guys have probably seen these covers so often on this channel. Both really good books, and yet I just keep going a few pages at a time, and then a month goes by. In a way, I don't mind because these are Victorian books and a lot of, I don't know about The Tenant of Wildfoot Hall though, but I know Dickens books were serialized. So he would release a chapter. I don't know how often, if it was a week or a month, probably a weekly, I don't know. And that's how people actually read a lot of Dickens books. They would, they would have a periodical that it was in. I can't remember which one it was. I, I remember Sherlock Holmes because it was a Strand magazine. But with Dickens, it, it was the, it was the thing to look forward to another chapter. So you'd get together with your family, and you know, when I was a kid, there was like the Sunday papers or whatever. And I know, actually, even more recently, there was a, a newspaper magazine called The Scotsman that Alexander McCall Smith was releasing some of his novels in that form, which I think is great. But I think at a time when I'm starting to get worried now. <laughs> I am actually starting to freak out about these, um, they're like, what is going on? Okay, this is real. But anyway, um, where was I? Oh yes. So before television or even radio was around and before film, I think that besides, besides theater, which didn't have like a stay tuned, it was usually just, I think, usually just a show. But, you know, serialized novels were kind of a... A cultural thing like you would oh I can't wait for the next episode kind of feeling you know like how how we how we do that here although nowadays people just wait and binge it all so I guess that's the hard version of the novel now but so I don't actually mind that I read a little at a time because that's what people kind of did so that's my excuse anyway so that's my mid-year freak out tag I was gonna think about tagging other people but I think everybody has done the tag that I might have tagged, but if you are one of those people who wants to do it, go for it, please. I love that sort of thing. And that's it for now. If you like this content, please subscribe. This is Catherine at Taking Tea with Catherine. Have a lovely, non-freaked out day. Someone is screaming. Or whistling.